You made a great decision to join in the trenches with Dave Lapham today because we catch up with wide receivers coach Troy Walters. And I'll tell you what, this guy was a great collegiate wide receiver. I mean, consensus All-American at Stanford. Fred Bolitnikoff Award winner. Uh, Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. He's got some skins on the wall. So when he speaks, his wide receiver room listens. And he's done a tremendous job taking raw talent that is a high, high level and developing it and growing it. And he's got a good wide receiver group as there is in the National Football League. The Bengals' big three is the best, in my opinion. And there's a very, very serious competition going on for spots four through six, four through seven, depending on how many receivers are kept in special teams. We're going to have a big influence on that. He talks about just about every wide receiver that he's coaching in this training camp. He interesting things to say about each and every one of them. And it is a very, very competitive uh, competitive room. He talks about uh, the love that his players have for, for playing the game, and that's obvious. A lot, a lot of good things going on in the passing game with the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, Joe Burrow is a huge factor, but Joe Burrow will tell you his wide receiver core ups his game. I mean, it's like they're growing together, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. We appreciate you joining us once again for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from our outstanding studios provided to us by First Star Logistics. And we got a very special guest today, wide receivers coach, Troy Walters. Now, here's a guy that's got skins on the wall at the position himself. Consensus All-American, Fred Blitnikoff Award winner, Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. I mean... He knows of what he speaks. First of all, coach, welcome and thank you. And when you're up there addressing your players, the fact that you played in the NFL for what, seven or eight years, I think it was, something like that, after that outstanding collegiate career, I mean, do you, do you get the feeling that they're really like their ears are perked up and they're they're really intent on what you got to say? I really do. Um, you know, anytime you can kind of relate to them and, and I've been in their shoes um, not only from a from on, an on the field perspective, but also off the field and, and what it takes to make it at the highest level and be successful and the preparation, um, how you watch film, how you study, how you take care of your body. Um, you know, I think they gravitate towards that information and, and all the guys in our room want to they want to be coached. They want to be great. And so um, they really uh, cherish all the information I can I can give to them and uh and they appreciate that. You know, that's that's the amazing uh, thing, Coach, is that you, you get some guys with some, I mean, blessed with some unbelievable physical abilities. There's no question about that. The big three, we've talked about this many times, your big three uh, is as good as any, I think. It's number one in the National Football League. Um, other people, it, it doesn't take long to call roll. I mean, I haven't heard anything other than maybe number two. I've heard a lot of number ones, I can tell you that. But with that aside, they always want to get better, don't they? It seems like their thirst for anything that you can give them that would help them get better, they're all in, right? Yeah, they are. Um, you know, they've set, they've set high goals for individually for themselves and, and collectively as a unit, you know, we have high goals. So all the, you know, all the rankings, we're the number one receiver unit, you know, that's past tense. You know, we've got to go out there this year and prove that we're the best uh, unit in the league and and to me it's not only top three i want to be the best unit from one to six one to seven you know i want our our sixth receiver seventh receiver fifth receiver to contribute to make plays whether it's on special teams or when their numbers called um, as in the case of trent Irwin last year i want those guys to step up and i want to be the deepest receiver group and that's what that's what i told them uh one of the goals coming out of camp is to make sure that we are uh uh, we build our depth and, um, and, and we, we have guys that when their numbers called are able to go in and, and, and make plays. And so just the standard individually and collectively that we, we set the guys every day, want to, want to, want to get, be great. And they compete with each other. And so when you have a Jamar chase competing with a T Higgins, with a Tyler Boyd and in a friendly way, but, uh, right. 
you know, then, then there's no time and to settle. There's no time to be compl become complacent. And so uh, that's the beauty of this group. The roster as a whole is so deep. I mean, uh, every position group has has tremendous depth. To make this 53-man roster is a hell of an accomplishment. And then to make the game day roster, you know, is another accomplishment. Um, and looking at your position group, like you talked about, four to six, four to seven, that's a battle royale, man. I mean, you've got you got a lot of players that are capable of uh, of making those roster spots, and you know it's going to be a fine line as to who makes it and who doesn't. Really competitive in that arena, isn't it? It is. It is, and that's a great problem to have as a coach. You know, you want right. as, as much competition as you can have. Uh, guys pushing each other. Um, that's only going to elevate our, our 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 play, and and so uh, you know you know you know who the top three guys are, and like you said, four to four to seven, those guys are battling. I always tell them every day that uh, everything you do uh, is on film, is being evaluated. Uh, and then we, we stress special teams. Like you've got to make a difference and be a playmaker on special teams. Uh, first of all, in order to make the team. And then, like you said, even to suit up on game day, you know, those the fourth, fifth, sixth receiver, those guys are primarily special teams guys. So it's, it's going to be a tremendous battle. I'm looking forward to the preseason. Um, getting out there, playing games, and seeing what those young guys can do, and and how things, uh, you know, how how things shape up uh, as we go forward. So unfortunately, you have the calf injury to to Joe Burrow, uh, and and now you know he's unable to participate. But the other guys are getting more reps with the wide receivers. There's always a silver lining to every every dark cloud. I mean, and, and the good news is Joe got a ton of reps in in the month of July. And he'll be back. I mean, it's not like he's he's not going to be back and pick up right where left off. You'd love in a perfect world, you'd love to continue to get reps on a daily basis. But uh, the fact that they're able to get reps and, and get indoctrinated with these other quarterbacks, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it, you know, we we we, uh, we need Joe. You know, we, yeah. we need Joe. We want Joe back. Um, but we understand in this game, injuries are part of the game, and. Uh, you know, when a guy goes down, the next guy has to step in and, and produce. And so, you know, I told the guys yesterday that, uh, you know, we expect Joe to be back. Um, but for some reason he's not, then then we've got to, um, you know, rally around whoever that next quarterback is. We've got to make sure we build him up. Um, we we got to make sure we're at our best. Um, so when uh, you can't have any drops, can't have any missed assignments, uh, we got to make sure we're, you know, we continue to elevate our play. And, uh, but just the reps with, with whoever it may be is, is good. Um, the chemistry, as you know, with Joe, I feel like he's got – we have great chemistry with him. Yep. Um, he knows where we're going to be. We know, you know, the type of ball. So uh, he's going to throw. So now just uh, establishing that chemistry with some of the other quarterbacks, um, to me, will be fruitful during this during this training camp. So if anything does happen to Joe and those guys step in, uh, we've got the reps. You know, there's so many things about Joe that just make you go, wow. But, man, when when he's not executing uh, the offense, you really notice his ball placement is unbelievable. I mean, he puts it in portholes, you know. Um, and, and and when that's not the case, uh, it's just it's just so noticeable. Joe's special in that regard, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's a special quarterback. Um, you know, he really doesn't – he doesn't have any weaknesses. Um, and the one thing I, I really – uh, notice and I, I'll compare him to Peyton Manning and and uh, even like Kurt Warner. Those are Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Is he he elevates everybody else's game. Um, so when you're around Joe, when you're on the field with him, because of the standard he sets, right? Uh, other positions, other guys have to their standards are raised and and uh, you know you don't want to drop a pass, you don't want to run the wrong route. Um, so just he elevates everybody around him. And, and that's what makes him really unique and really special. Let's uh, let's go through some of your guys, Coach. I'm going to give you a name and maybe tell tell us um, a couple of traits or whatever that make him unique and what he's done to improve himself, even from last year to this year. And anything that you've noticed that he may have really worked on to uh, to to make some significant improvement. Let's start with. Uh, Jamar Chase. What 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 are the couple of things about Jamar 
that make him the freak that he is. And uh, and he's even uh, the thing. The thing about it, you watch him. It's like he's even better. What what is it about Jamar? Yeah, he, he's a, he's explosive. I mean, that that's the first thing that comes to mind. Explosive as a route runner um, in terms of his vertical speed and acceleration. Um, explosive uh, with the ball in his hands. You know, you can get him the ball behind the line of scrimmage and there's a chance he's going to go the distance. And so just that explosive quality um, and that characteristics makes him special. Um, you know, to me, he continues. He wants to be the best. He wants to be the best route runner. He knows he can improve just his overall route running um, top of the route, how to create a little more separation um, because he has strong hands. So if any 50 50 contested ball, he's going he's going to make it. But uh, he understands that he can work on just improving his overall route running ability. And uh, and that's what we're trying to do this camp. Boy, Joey Bose says that um, this guy, you know, he can power clean 295 pounds, you know, and, and do it more than once. You know, it's like that, that that's significant. I mean, that, that that's the number that's like, oh, man. I mean, he is physically strong. I mean, weight room strong as well as naturally strong, uh, football fundamentally strong kind of guy, isn't he? He is. He is. And, and in this league, it comes down to uh, contested catches. I mean, you're going to even even the best receivers, you don't create a whole lot of separation in this league. You know, there's some great DBs. And so it really comes down to making that contested, strong hands, going to attack the football type catch. And, and he's he's the he's the best in the game at it. So uh, uh, now it's just improving some of the other aspects of his game so that he can be a complete uh uh complete receiver t higgins i mean i'd hate to be a defensive back and you know be in off coverage and see him come running down the football if it looks like an outside linebacker type body you know running at me and but he's got unbelievable feet he can run great routes if i'm a if i'm a db i'm like whoa got my hands full today uh it is that's the thing that strikes you is his overall size but i mean his size speed athleticism ratios are are crazy, aren't they? Yeah, and T's an example of a guy that's gotten better every year. I mean, he came in as a rookie, and he was kind of out of shape, overweight. There was COVID, so, you know, there were some reasons behind that. But every year, he's gotten better and better. And, uh, you know, for the first week at camp, I mean, he looks – hes I don't know if it's the number, going from a, a big number to a small number, but, I mean, he's explosive. Um, he comes off the ball well. Um, he's getting in and out of his breaks. I mean, he looks like a a, a 5'10", 5'11 receiver in terms of his footwork and, yeah. his, and his agility. Um, so you put that with with his 6'3", 6'4", uh, body. I mean, he's 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 had a great camp so far, and and I expect a, another uh, step up in terms of production this year uh, from from T. There's been, um, you know, some significant battles, uh, corners working against these two guys, uh, Chase and Higgins, and it's like the old iron sharpening iron kind of scenario. But, I mean, these young corners are trying to step up, and they feel like if they can do it against these guys, they can do it against anybody in the National Football League. So it's it's pretty good comp- competition out there, isn't it? It is. It is. We have some, we have some good, young, feisty corners that, that make us work as well. So we understand – like you said, iron, sharpen iron, um, you know, as we battle, as we compete, we're making each other better. And uh, for them, going against our group every day, um, it's only going to make them better. And, and we talk, we communicate. The DBs might tell us what they saw on a certain route and, and why they jumped it, why they were able to break it up. You know, we'll give them feedback as well. So we're, we're working hand-to-hand, trying to make each other better um, because we're going to need – we're going to need each, you know – each unit to, to be at the best to, to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Man, a guy that can do that probably as well as anybody in the league is the guy going into his eighth year, Tyler Boyd. You know, I mean, you can say a lot of things about Tyler Boyd, but I'll, I'll take uh, Paul Brown. The biggest compliment he would give you a, as a football player is, you know, he would say, you know what? You're a hell of a football player. He goes, that, and, and I mean that, you know, and it'd be like, wow, Paul Brown said, I'm a good foot. Tyler Boyd, Paul Brown would say, is a hell of a football player. This guy just gets football, doesn't he? He does. He probably doesn't get enough credit either. Um, he's really the glue uh, in our room. I mean, he's the guy that sets the tempo. I've never since the, uh, the the temperature. Um, I've never seen him have a bad day. Great energy. 
um, loves coming to work, um, really loves the guys around him. Uh, and then there, he doesn't have any weaknesses. I mean, he goes out there and and uh, he can, he does everything well, catches the ball. To me, he's the quarterback security blanket. He knows if he quarterbacks know that, that if they throw him the ball, he's going to make a play. Um, and the one thing I love about TB is he's unselfish. And so, you know, a lot of times Jamar and T, they're getting all the credit and they're getting the accolades. And, you know, he, he's fine with that. He, in fact, he celebrates those guys and wants them to be great. And, and, uh, and he loves Cincinnati and loves the Bengals. And so he just wants to, he wants to win a Super Bowl and whatever he can do to help us win a Super Bowl, that, that's his, that's his main goal. Being a former quarterback, you know, kind of molds that kind of leadership scenario do you think being a former quarterback not only helped him in his transition to to wide receiver from a physical standpoint but a mental standpoint both on and off the football field definitely definitely anytime you can you know you, you play the receiver from a quarterback's perspective you know what they're thinking um it definitely helps and and he's grown you know i heard stories when he first got here first couple years you know and and, and where he is now um He's, he's he's done a tremendous job and probably learned a lot from AJ and and some of those guys he was around some of those vets he was around and and now he's the vet and so it's his turn to give back to the to the young guys and be kind of a mentor and and he does a great job. Let's uh let's talk about the the veteran that you made mention of earlier in the podcast uh Trenton Irwin. That's a guy that any any roster probably in the National Football League would love to have Trenton Irwin. <laughs> Yeah, he's like a Swiss Army knife. Um, you know, right. he can do it all, do a lot of things. Uh, you know, he can back up all three positions. He's not necessarily just a slot receiver. You saw last year when when uh, uh, when Chase went down, he was able to step in on the outside and, and play play well. Um, you know, if TB goes down, he's able to play in the slot. And then when his number's called, he makes plays. And and uh, and so, you know, it's, it's a tremendous. Uh, you know, when he when he gets an opportunity, he's ready for it. And and, you know, he works his tail off. Uh, you know, he's had to fight to stay in this league. And I think that's made him even better. Just the, the sense of urgency, like, man, I can't take any reps for granted. I can't take any plays for granted. And, uh, you know, he's a he's done a great job. Another guy that gives you that type of mentality and that type of performance. Uh, Trent Taylor. I mean, he's. He's cut from the, a lot of the same cloth there, isn't he? Yeah, another veteran, tough, been through some fires, been through some trials, um, you know, a steady punt returner, which in this league, you can't take that for granted. You can't, can't take someone back there making good decisions, getting the ball back to the offense for granted. And and like I said, with even with him, when his number's called, when, he, when he's had to step in Kansas City AFC championship game um, two years ago, didn't play – receiver the whole year and we put him in for a two-point play made a play last year against cleveland a couple guys went down he stepped in uh made some catches so um he's always ready he's a pro he understands his role and when his number's called he knows uh he's gonna be ready another guy in that in that same kind of uh category stanley morgan i mean he always seems to be th that's a guy that you know you know if stanley morgan has to go out there and and, and try to get something done He's going to give a thousand percent effort to get it done, isn't he? Yeah, Stanley's a team guy, um, unselfish, understands his role as number one, being that special teams captain, that special teams playmaker. Um, he brings energy every day, positive energy. Um, and so, uh, you know, and he can play receiver. You know, he doesn't hadn't had as many opportunities. Um, but, you know, at Nebraska, you know, he was – leading receiver uh, might be the leading receiver in the in their uh in the history of nebraska so um you know he has some some receiver skills but he understands his role and he brings that positive energy and so uh we're it's glad we're glad to have uh stan on this roster the guy that's uh opened some eyes in the early stages of training camp here your fourth round pick out of purdue uh charlie jones he's he's competed pretty well hasn't he he has. He catches the ball um, as well as anyone we have, to be honest with you. I don't know if he's dropped the ball yet. Um, right. And so, you know, we're throwing a lot at those young guys. Not only are we throwing a lot at them, but the defense as well. And so they're, you know, their heads are spinning a little bit. Um, but you can tell he's a competitor. You can tell um, when the lights come on, he's going to make plays. And so now it's just 
we're just trying to tighten up some of his route running, some of his awareness, because uh, in this league, you're going to see multiple coverages, multiple techniques. So, um, but he's done a great job of studying the, the offense, knowing what to do, and and now it's just tightening up a few things. What about your uh, your pick in this year's draft as well, Andre Yosevas, uh, big body guy, six foot three, with all the speed and all the athleticism. I mean, pentathlete, you know, and everything that goes along with that. I guess. Yeah, he's really further ahead than we thought. You know, I oh. thought he might be more of a developmental guy, take a year or two, but uh, you know, he's been impressive in terms of his size, height, weight, speed, agility. I mean, he's a better route runner than I thought coming out. And so that's been a pleasant surprise. He continues to work his tail off, getting better um, each day. And then, uh, you know, he's made some great contested type catches. Um, so the sky's the limit. I'm very, very excited about him and what he can do. And now that we have the pads on, now it's real football. And so all the rookies, you know, you really can see what they can do. And and I expect him to have a, an awesome, a phenomenal preseason and make a ton of plays. Got other guys in the in the mix as well at training camp. Kwame Lasseter obviously is a name that's been been around for a bit. Uh, Jackson, Hippenhammer, uh, Carter. Talk about some of those guys that are are trying to make an impression and uh, and, and stick with the Cincinnati Bengals. And and if not the Bengals, I mean, coach, a big deal is these guys are, you know, just thankful for an opportunity to show what they have. And there's 31 other teams evaluating tape and evaluating preseason games and everything else. And man, I. This roster is going to be hard to make. And I, I I think that a lot of players that are in this training camp are going to be on other people's rosters. And that'll be a true testament to how deep the Bengals roster really is. I mean, I think some of some of your guys are going to end up, you know, somewhere else making contributions. There's no doubt. Yeah. And I, t I told him the story about Kendrick Pryor last year and, and how we brought him as a free agent. Uh, didn't take many reps in the spring. Um, but came back in the summer and, and, you know, we don't play our starters. We don't play the veterans a whole lot in the preseason. So the young guys are going to get a lot of reps in the preseason. They can show what they can do. They can put their, their resume on tape. And uh, if it's not, like you said, if it's not for this team, it might be for another team. And so um, we've got a good battle. Uh, Kwame Lasseter was on our practice squad last year. He's kind of like a Trent Irwin where he can play multiple positions, return, returns kicks. So he brings value in, in, in that regards. Um, Shedrick Jackson, we brought in as a free agent, you know, Bo Jackson's nephew, yep. um, fast four, two, four, two, eight guy. So can run, um, and, and can catch the ball strong hands. And so he's a guy that you can continue to work with and, and develop. And, and I think he's going to make some plays this preseason, uh, Mac hip and hammer from Miami of Ohio has done a good job. And then, uh, you know, Malachi Carter from Georgia Tech, all those guys are competing. All those guys are going to get opportunities. And uh, and like you said, uh, we, we'd like, I'd love to keep them all, uh, but you can't. And so my goal is to, to, to train them, to teach them, coach them, so that they can go out in the preseason and be successful, make plays, make our decision, uh, make it tough. Yeah. You know, make it tough who we keep and who we don't. And then if we don't keep them, They've done enough where now they can get another opportunity somewhere else. Zach mentioned that uh, the install starts to come fast and furious, particularly, you know, when you want to uh, start working like you're going to be working against the Green Bay Packers and then other preseason opponents. You have that practice on the Wednesday before the Friday game, you know, with the Green Bay Packers. So I'm sure um, a lot of your younger wide receivers' heads are spinning a little bit. Uh, it, and honestly, it's, it's, there, there's a lot to absorb for, for wide receivers and, um, uh, every route, you know, has different things you can do based on coverages you're presented, you know, within that play, not just understanding that play, the formation where you line up and all, but then what you do and then what you might have to do based on what they do to you. I mean, it's, it's not as easy as people think it is not just going out in the backyard and playing football, man. No, it's not. No, it's not. You know, we, we, we have a we have a uh, you know, we throw a lot at the guys in terms of our own installation. What we can do offensively is a lot. And then you add onto that all the different looks that the defense can present. And Lou, you know, it is defense They're there. They do a lot of a little bit of everything. And so right. it, it keeps you on your toes. Um, but what we try to do is throw it all at them early. Uh, we know there's going to be mistakes. We teach off of the mistakes. You know, the biggest thing is we don't want to make the same mistakes twice. 
And so those guys have done a good job in, in our group, in our room, just learning from, from others' mistakes. And then things start settling down. I tell them this is the hardest part of uh, the season because, you know, you install, you're not really sure. And then we start going uh, without scripts. And so Zach, just Brian, Zach, they just call it. So you don't know what they're going to call. Um, but once we get into the preseason games, you're going to have a game. You're going to have a call sheet. So you're going to know exactly what 40 plays we're going to run. So you can study those. Once you get in the season, the same thing, you narrow down your focus for each game. So um, I tell them this is the toughest part. And uh, not only um, uh, physically just being out there training camp, but mentally as well. And so, uh, you know, if you can conquer this part of it, then uh, the things after they become easy. You know, the thing uh, too, that's so impressive with your group and you're a big part of the reason why is, you know, a guy isn't just an X or a Z, you know, a flanker or a split end. He isn't just a Y, you know, a, a, a slot receiver. These guys can line up anywhere. I mean, you have interchangeable parts, and it's like, man, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. You know, it's like, uh, I'm going to try to – I know where he's lined up. I'm going to double him. He's going to be here. I don't have to worry about him. No, now he's over here. He's motioning there. He's doing this, doing that. You guys um, have so many guys that – Credit to you and, and and the players for being able to absorb what you're teaching them can just take on so much and make it so difficult for the opponent. Yeah, that's what we look for as we go through the scouting and and uh, the draft and uh, acquiring guys is they've got to be able to process. Um, they can't just be a one dimensional, uh, one positional player. Um, even Tyler Boyd, you know, he, he's a he's a slot, but he can play outside if you need yep. him to. Yep. Um, so, you know, I tell the guys the first one of the first meetings I tell them is the more you can do, the better. You got to learn multiple positions. And so we teach concepts. We don't teach really positions. The X does this. The F we teach concepts. Number one does this. Number two runs this route. Number three. So now it gives Zach, Brian, the, the, the flexibility to put T at number two, one play, put him at number one, put him at number three, put chase, move guys around. And those guys know the concepts. And so, um, you know, we can be flexible and we can put stress on the defense. So in a typical year, from one year to the next, during an off season, how much change is there schematically? I mean, when, when the big three comes back this year after last year's performance, how, how many more nuances are there? How, what, what kind of adjustments? Is it major? Is it just tweaks? Or what are we looking at there? Yeah, it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And we, you yeah. know, we've, been, we've been successful. But right. at the same time, we're not complacent. And we go back and study some of the things we can do better, um, some of the defenses that maybe slowed us down a bit. And, uh, you know, we'll make some tweaks, just some tweaks here and there. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing major, no major overhauls because it's been successful. Um, and then, and then it's, and then it's about once again, individually, you know, what can T do better? What can Jamar do better? What can Tyler Boyd do better? And, and working individually on those, on those skill sets to improve the individual game. You know, it's every receiver is different. They may have a little bit different body type. They may do something better than, than, than another thing. Um, but it, it, it seems like collectively, Give me a couple or three traits that your group collectively uh, is is it is it upper echelon in terms of being able to run routes as a group? Uh, is it hands? Is it what? What do you got, Coach? I think number one is just contested catch situations. Uh, you look at Jamar, you look at T, you look at Tyler Boyd. I mean, those guys, Trent Irwin. You know, the guys that have played ex uh, extended minutes. Those guys, when it's been a 50-50 type ball or contested type catch. They typically come down with it, and, and that and that's the that's the key. No matter what, in every situation, you look at Buffalo in the snow, and we made some contested catches. AFC Championship game. So in the big games and the big moments, those guys have have come down with some some pretty big contested type catches. Um, I'd like to say we're a detailed group in terms of route running, um, understand the fundamentals, understand the details at the top of the route, how to create separation. Um, I think we block well. Our guys are are unselfish. So in the run game, they're gonna get after it. In this offense, we've got to, there's times where we have to crack a defensive end or we may have to go block a linebacker. 
And those guys are unselfish and willing to do that. Um, and then to me, it's, it's an intangible. It's not really on the field, but just the chemistry, um, just the chemistry off the field and, and the, the love that everyone has for each other. It helps us on the field. Um, you know, I think guys love showing up. They love going to work. They love practicing. They love competing. Game days are, are that's the best part of the best part of the week. And we have fun playing football. And I think guys, I think the fans can see it on the sideline. Um, and it's really the culture Zach set this entire team. I mean, you see the defense up on the sideline cheering for the offense and the offense cheering for the defense. And it's just a it's just guys love coming to work. And so. Those are some of the things I think that we do well and what makes us successful. Well, Coach, a lot of that is uh, is what you've done with that group. I'm, you've grown and developed that group big time, and I think uh, the Bengals' wide receiver room as, a, as an entirety is as good as there is in the National Football League. And, man, uh, kudos to you for, for putting it all together. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. They have fun performing. And it's a heck of a lot of fun watching them perform. Yeah. I can tell you that. It's, your group is uh, is special, to say the least, as are you. And appreciate your carbon time for us because I know pads are on now. Training camp's in, in full force. And thanks for taking a time out to join us, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, and it's another year, so, you know, we're not going to be complacent. We got we to prove ourselves this year, and, and we're going to go out and do that. I hear that. Have the best day you ever had, sir. All right. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.